Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Tarot Parlor Podcast. In this episode, we're going to take a brief look at five famous haunted houses. This is part of my Things That Go Bump in the Night series. So with that said, let's get on with it. So I grew up in a house filled with paranormal activity and hauntings. When I was young, my grandmother's house, and no one ever talked about it, or the strange occurrences were shrugged off and given lame, mundane explanations. It probably made the adults living in that house feel more secure about the world around them. Logical excuses were easier to assimilate into our conventional Midwest lives. One time my mother and I talked about this little house, my grandma's house on 1021 East 2nd Street in Mitchell, South Dakota. And there was so much activity in this house. I really didn't talk about it much with my grandmother, but um, once in a while something would happen that just would make both of us raise our eyebrows and we would look at each other and it's like, oh my. (laughs) So while my grandmother was living in another location at one point, my mom and dad had lived in this house. And um, we were talking about it together one day, way into middle age, and I was middle-aged, and she was old, uh, old, elderly. And we both realized that we both experienced a lot of things in that house. And my mother told me about one time when she came home from work to have lunch on her lunch break. And she said she was sitting in the kitchen at the kitchen table and the hair on the back of her neck stood up and she became so uncomfortable. She just left everything on the table and she left the house. And I can understand that. <laughs> there was like, there was a feeling of always being watched. Um, there were things turning on, turning off. There were things that would flip off the table onto the floor. Um, the kitchen oven turned itself on at one point. We were in the room, I was in the room, and everything was normal. Left the kitchen, came back, and the burner was red hot. Um, just lots of things. There was a haunted doll doll that I had in my upstairs bedroom, and that's a whole other video on its own. Um, there was just really creepy feelings and little things going on, and and it um, it was just that kind of house. So I grew up with that. I'm I am not a stranger to that kind of activity. So I'm fascinated by haunted houses, and I understand other people's feelings about haunted houses, and I like watching movies where they're going in to investigate the paranormal activity in a haunted house, and and it's all very exciting to me. As a child and in my 20s, uh, it frightened me oftentimes until I, until I uh, touched upon Oh, let's see. Until I decided to take my power back one time. And that's also another whole video that, that's coming. Uh, but you don't have to be afraid and you can claim your space. Just know that. So now let's take a look at five famous houses around the country. Some of them I would love to visit. The first house is Myrtle's Plantation in St. Francisville, Louisiana. This is an historic old antebellum plantation home from 1796, um, surrounded with trees draped with Spanish moss, and it's set in voodoo-rich Louisiana, and you have the perfect setting for ghosts. But you still need mayhem and history to generate ghostly spirits, and there are lots of both at the Myrtles Plantation. In 1808, Clark Woodruff took charge of the plantation from his deceased father-in-law, General David Bradford, where he kept things running along with his wife, Sarah, and their three kids. Legend has it that Woodruff also took a special liking to a slave he owned named Chloe. But Chloe was immensely jealous of Woodruff's family and baked a birthday cake filled with poisonous oleander leaves. Woodruff's wife, Sarah, and two of the children died. Chloe confessed, but fellow slaves hung Chloe and dumped her body in the Mississippi. 
A host of other natural deaths occurred inside the home, but the only other murder was when plantation owner William Winter was shot and killed in 1871 while standing on the front porch. He supposedly staggered inside, dying on the 17th step of the home. Myrtle's plantation is also reportedly built on the site of an old Indian burial ground. Of course it is. (laughs) <laughs> and during the Civil War, Union soldiers ransacked the home. While it's hard to separate fact from fiction, popular sightings of ghosts around Myrtle's plantation include the large mirror in the home that contains the spirits of Sarah Woodruff and her children. Ghosts seen around the 17th step, and of course, Chloe who is outside tending to her plantings. The house is on the National Register of Historic Places, and it's now a bed and breakfast. How fun is that? I'm up for for a night um, at the Myrtles Plantation, that's for sure. I would love that. The house is Chambers Mansion in San Francisco, California. And this is set in the prestigious Pacific Heights neighborhood of San Francisco, the Chambers Mansion. It was built in 1887 and named after its first owner, Richard Chambers, who was a silver mine tycoon. Legend goes that Chambers lived here with his two nieces who hated each other. Mm, Oh boy. When Chambers died in 1901, the nieces inherited the mansion. One reportedly bought the house next door and moved in, while the other sister, Claudia, stayed. Claudia reportedly loved pigs, but met her fate one day when she was nearly cut in half from what her family called a farm implementation accident. Ghost expert Jim Fassbinder, who conducts haunted tours in San Francisco, claims that an insane member of the Chambers family who was kept in the attic chased Claudia downstairs into the Josephine room and killed her. The mansion was eventually converted to the Mansion Hotel in 1977, where celebrities such as Barbara Streisand, Robert De Niro, and Robin Williams stayed. Many guests have reported strange occurrences while staying there. The house is Franklin Castle in Cleveland, Ohio. Complete with a tower and turrets and balconies and stone outcroppings, gargoyles, wrought iron fixtures and fences, this imposing Gothic-style Franklin Castle is said to be Ohio's most haunted home. It was built in 1860 for Hans Tiedemann, an immigrant from Germany who became a wholesale grocer turned banker. Depending on who you believe, Tiedemann was either an evil tyrant who had a hand in mysterious deaths that occurred in the home between 1865 and 1895, including the deaths of three babies, or he was a decent and hardworking man but faced unfortunate circumstances. There have been many owners of the home, including a German singing society and a church group. Presently, it's owned by an internet businesswoman who wanted to renovate it and turn it into a B&B and hold haunted mystery weekends. But a fire in 1999 derailed her plans. Paranormal activity includes sounds of footsteps. Oh, babies crying. How sad. Babies crying. And door slamming. The LaLaurie Mansion in New Orleans, Louisiana. So horrific stories of torture and abuse inflicted on slaves who worked in this house was reported in the 1830s. And the abuser was said to be Madame Delphine LaLaurie, a socialite of great wealth and prominence in New Orleans. Delphine and her husband, Dr. Louis LaLaurie, would host elaborate parties at the house, but soon stories of vicious cruelty emerged. In one tale, Delphine was whipping the child of a slave when the child broke away and ran to the roof, falling to her death. The turning point for the home came when a fire broke out, and when help arrived, they witnessed horrific scenes of punishment and torture inflicted on the slaves. And I do believe this character was um, featured in um, an American Horror Story. 
the coven, and I do believe her house of horrors was also uh, depicted within that fictional uh, series. So the, ho the house itself, the home, has undergone many changes in owners over the years, with one of the most recent owners, actor Nicolas Cage. Cage said of the LaLaurie house, you know, other people have beachfront property, I have ghostfront property. Unfortunately, Cage lost the property in a foreclosure auction. The Sprague Mansion, it is located in Cranston, Rhode Island. So one of Cranston's most prosperous families, the Sprague family, owned Cranston Print Works, a textile mill that was the first to make calico prints and to help pioneer chemical bleaching. When William Sprague died in 1836, he left the business to his two sons, Amasa and William II. Amasa concentrated on the family business while William II focused on politics, serving as a U.S. representative, a governor, and a United States senator. On December 31, 1843, Amasa was found shot and beaten on the road between his textile mill and his mansion. A man was hanged for the crime, but later found to be innocent. Oh my God, how horrible is that? The true killer was never found. The Sprague family's fortunes eventually faded, and the Sprague mansion changed ownership many times with the Cranston Historical Society, saving it from demolition in 1967. Hauntings of the mansion most often observed include Amasa in the wine cellar and a spirit thought to be Charlie the butler descending the main stairway. Legend goes that Charlie's hopes and dreams of riches were dashed when his daughter did not marry the wealthy homeowner's son. And with that said, I'm going to end this episode here as usual until the next time and until the next video. Bye-bye.